well, how should we have government? So how, what, what, what is right for us to have as far as these setups go? And um, especially when you think, when you really drill into like private property, think about this, who actually owns the land? And, and this is, this is one of my, you know, the, libertarian or anarchist uh, philosophy. It's, first of all, it's just that, it's philosophy. It's based on a few axioms or principles. And one of the number one things is self-ownership, that you own yourself. And part of that sounds good, but another part of it, and this is, this is where they get it completely wrong, is that the Bible says, what? Know you not that ye are the Lord, that you are bought with a price? That there is a higher governing power than yourself over yourself. So on one hand, yes, we should have liberty to do what we want to a degree with ourselves, with our bodies, with, you know, without someone infringing upon us. But at the same time, there is a governing higher power that's going to dictate, first of all, what's right and wrong, and second, what's a crime and what's not a crime of what we do with our bodies. Because where the, where the libertarians fail, one of the major areas they fail, they say, oh, because of this, you know, uh, this philosophy that, that you own your bodies, you can do what you want your body, they have no problems with sodomites. They have no problem with that at all. And their whole philosophy just falls flat on its face and it's going to end up going nowhere when you don't have institute laws for a government to, to do a proper punishment against that crime committed of sodomy because, yes, it is a crime because the Bible says so. Because God put the death penalty judgment on it. Just because people want to say, oh, you should have the right to marry who you want to marry and love who you want to love. Yeah, you have the right to do that, but then the government has the right to enforce laws. And if it was a godly nation, there would be a law against sodomy and there would be a law that follows God's judgment of what's right and what's wrong and what's appropriate. Who are we to decide what's appropriate over God? If God says one thing and, and a man says another, I'm going to go with what God said. And people don't like that or don't want to hear it. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, the Bible hasn't changed. God's word hasn't changed. And for a long time, people actually followed and obeyed this. And a lot of people believe this. Just because today there may be only a few people believing this doesn't make it any less true. It just means that more and more people have been brainwashed into, except in, into these, a lot of times, brainwashed with philosophies of men. And spend more time. See, the problem is that you have, you have Christians spending more time in politics than they're spending in their Bible. And they're getting all screwed up and they're listening to all their political talking heads and they're getting all their morality from these, from these Republicans. Instead of from God's word, where it belongs. You need, you need God's word to dictate your politics, not the other way around.